Chess friends, welcome to the most trickiest chess opening ever, known as the gangster chess opening, the Russo Gambit is a game changer, making no one feel safe, if you're ready, let's explore it, the great thing is, the Russo Gambit starts with the usual moves, you begin with pawn e4, then pawn e5, knight f3 goes after the pawn, and knight c6, followed by bishop c4, usually, players expect the Italian or the two knights game, but you surprise them by moving your pawn to f5. A move that looks traditional but is full of surprises, this opening is similar to the Vienna Gambit or the King's Gambit, but with reversed colors, it's quite challenging to play this tricky game, there are dangers for the white player at every step, in this video, I'm excited to show you my three favorite tricks in the Russo Gambit, the usual start is when white captures the offered pawn with pawn takes f5, but this move is a mistake, although many players don't realize it, after white takes the pawn. You can advance your own pawn, forcing their knight to retreat, often, your opponents will be puzzled because they will see your knight and queen controlling important squares, they might end up moving their knight back to g1, in the Russo Gambit, I would like to suggest you to move the knight on f6, which is a straightforward way for black to gain an advantage, however, today, I have another strategy to show you, it's a bit more complex but causes even more trouble for white, you move your pawn to d5. Directly challenging their bishop and paving the way for your bishop to advance and recapture the pawn, the issue with the move is that it gives white the chance to check with their queen at h5, this is a critical point in the Russo gambit, as sometimes your own pawn could become a target, however, this isn't usually too scary because you can simply move your king to safety, white's attack often relies just on the queen, which isn't enough to create a serious threat, then. White has to reposition their bishop, typically to e3, which lets you start pressuring the now vulnerable queen, you advance your knight to f6 to threaten the queen and push it back, which also allows you to recover your pawn at f5, often, your opponents will want to keep their pawn, so they might move their queen to g5, which looks threatening, the queen then eyes your king and guards the pawn, but you don't stop, you advance your pawn to h6 to pressure the queen. The queen's only option to keep guarding the pawn is to move to g6, your opponents might be hoping this aggressive queen position can lead to a checkmate threat, but you keep playing smartly, you move your knight to d4, a very accurate move, this creates difficulty for white in protecting the pawn, your goal is to capture that pawn, forcing the queen to retreat to g3, once that happens you can reposition your king to f7, a safer spot, and then you're in a strong position to continue the game. After moving your dark squared bishop to d6, things start looking good for you, black gains an advantage, but your opponent might still try to defend the pawn on f5 by pushing their pawn to g4, it seems like there's no immediate, strong move for you, but then you have the option of moving your bishop to d7, setting a trap and let me tell you a quote in sudden. If you don't heal what hurt you, you will bleed all over people who didn't cut you. So if white plays any move, say pawn to c3 or something else, your strategy is to quietly move your bishop to e8, this move is a silent threat because it puts the white queen on g6 in a position where it can be captured, you might have the chance to make this bishop move immediately, but if you want to safeguard your knight, you can exchange it on b3 first, after this exchange, when you move your bishop to e8, the white queen gets trapped, leading you to victory. The second trap is one of my favorites in the Russo Gambit, when you push your pawn to f5, it might look like a weak or questionable move to your opponents, and they might think they can take advantage of it, what they often don't realize is that in the Russo Gambit, this f5 pawn has the potential to become a queen and even deliver a checkmate to white, it's quite a surprise move. Usually, to counter, white will play pawn to d3, aiming to protect their pawn on e4, then you respond with placing your bishop on c5, an aggressive move that brings your bishop into play, this can lead white to attack with their knight to g5, thinking they can exploit your early pawn move to f5, they might consider moving their bishop to f7 to threaten your king or using their knight to create a double attack on your queen and rook at f7, it seems like a tough spot for you. But then you cleverly push your pawn to f4, this not only advances your position but also disrupts the defense of white's knight by blocking their dark squared bishop, making the knight vulnerable to your queen, white might feel confident at this point, planning to move their knight to f7, thinking they can capitalize on what they perceive as your odd moves, they see knight f7 as a great move since it threatens both your queen and rook, 
white is content, believing they have the upper hand, however. You then make a bold move by advancing your queen to h4, setting up a threat that could lead to checkmate, if your opponent is alert, they will try to find a way to counter this threat, in my old videos on the Russo Gambit, I explained how you can come out on top if white decides to castle at this juncture, many viewers wondered what to do if the opponent plays pawn to g3, questioning the best way to continue the attack, so, I decided to explore this scenario too, and it turns out to be quite enjoyable. After your opponent moves pawn to g3, you should advance your queen, the aim is to maintain the offensive pressure, with your queen moved forward, it's in a position to potentially dive into g2, targeting the rook and the pawn on f2, thus keeping the attack lively and threatening, you have a bishop ready, so now your attack gets serious, your opponent might easily take your rook on h8, but then, you make a smart move by pushing your pawn to d5, this move gives up some material, but it's for a good reason. It speeds up your play and brings your bishop into the action, you're setting up to move your bishop to g4, where it can threaten the queen and add another piece to your attack, after you move your pawn to d5, your opponent might take it, but that's when you move your bishop to g4, putting the queen under pressure, if white moves the queen, you have a great opportunity to increase the pressure with your knight moving to d4, and then to f3, coordinating your pieces against white's king. This action forces white to respond, perhaps by attacking your bishop, but you won't back down, instead, you'll boldly capture their pawn on g3 with your pawn, advancing your russo pawn further up the board. Now, it's on the third rank, becoming a significant threat, white can't take it back without losing their rook on h1 because your pawn is pinning it down, if white tries something else, like taking your bishop on g4, you don't just recapture there, you proceed with your plan, you're going to take that opportunity to capture and promote your pawn to a new queen, intensifying your attack, the rook can move to g1, but doing so would be a mistake because it would be captured right away. And this wouldn't stop your advancing pawn, so, white is essentially losing the game dramatically at this point, interestingly, the f7 pawn, often seen as one of black's weakest points in various openings and a target for white, becomes incredibly strong in this scenario, it switches to an aggressive mode and single-handedly overpowers white, this leads to the third sneaky strategy in the Russo Gambit and let me share a quote with you. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So after you move your pawn to f5, a good response from white would be to play their pawn to d4, countering in the center, let's assume they choose to play d4, which is a bit sophisticated and might not be the go-to move for many players, however, if you face a skilled opponent, what should you do? The best action for black is to capture the pawn on d4, this move is something I've discussed in a different video, which you can watch if you're interested, capturing on d4 is a smart play, but there's an even sneakier move, taking the pawn on e4, this move is a bit risky, but it can lead to many wins of course, after you play pawn takes e4, if white captures your knight on e5, it might seem like they have the upper hand as they target your f7 pawn, that's when you push your pawn to d5. Challenging their bishop, this sets a trap, you're tempting white to move their queen to h5, aiming at your king, which seems like a strong attack for them, it seems like white is close to checkmating you, especially after moving their queen to f7, which can feel like they're setting up for a scholar's checkmate, that's why this move is attractive to many players, however, the best move for white would be to reposition their bishop from c4, despite this, the queen move to h5 is very appealing. When you respond with pawn to g6, trying to repel the queen, white might see an opportunity to sacrifice their knight on g6, this tactic is quite common in many chess openings, where a knight sacrifice can lead to a pinned piece against the rook, if you were to capture the knight, white could then take your rook and claim an advantage, but, you have a better response by moving your knight to f6, setting up a counterattack against the queen. White must keep their queen on the h-file to maintain the pressure, if the queen moves away, the pin on your g6 pawn will be lifted, and you can capture the knight on g6, so, white likely will move their queen to h4 to keep the pin active, next, you make a clever move by capturing on d4 with your knight, the board might seem chaotic and overwhelming at this point, but remember, your opponent is probably just as baffled by the complexity, don't worry, we'll sort out this confusion soon. And you'll understand how to navigate this position to secure a win, for now, 
let's assess the situation calmly, the gain is evenly balanced in terms of material, white might be targeting your rook, but you're creating threats too, you can move your knight to take on c2, delivering a check to the king and likely capturing the rook afterward, you're also putting pressure on white's bishop at c4, so, while white is focused on taking your rook, you have multiple threats, you can attack the king, the rook, and the bishop, giving you the upper hand, white has a couple of options to respond, and one sensible choice is moving their bishop to b3 to protect both the bishop and the c2 pawn, however, you have a winning strategy up your sleeve, it involves an unusual but effective repositioning of your knight, this kind of play showcases the cleverness of the Russo gambit, you'll start this unique knight maneuver, proving how deceptive and powerful this opening can be, you pull your knight back from d4 to f5. Aiming at the queen, the plan is to force the queen off the h-file, if the queen moves, you can safely capture the knight on g6 without losing your rook, if white keeps the queen on the h-file, you make another surprising move by retreating your knight to e7, usually, moving the knight to e7 is normal for black, but it's uncommon for such a move to make your opponent want to give up, in this situation, however, white might as well consider resigning. The reason is you've set up a hidden attack on the queen while also threatening to capture the knight, here's how you secure the win, you can capture either the queen or the knight, depending on white's move. If the queen moves to, say, c3, you simply take the knight on g6, gaining an extra piece without losing anything in return, your position becomes more active and dominant, your king remains safe, and you can proceed to play bishop g7, followed by castling on the king's side, with plenty of pieces protecting your king, you're in a very strong and safe position, this situation is a clear win for you and let me tell you a quote. You will never know your limits until you push yourself to them. Ok this scenario unfolds when white plays their bishop to b3, you achieve victory through the clever knight maneuver, retreating it to f5 and then to e7, and finally capturing the knight on g6, if white decides to take your rook at h8, it actually works in your favor, you can then capture the pawn on c2, putting the king in check and also threatening the rook, if the king moves. Say to f1, you have a clear path, take the bishop first, then capture the rook on a1, leaving you with an extra piece and a strong advantage, however, often your opponents will think things through and realize capturing the knight is a better option for them, leading them to move their king to d1 to attack your knight, if you take their piece, they'll probably take your knight, but that's a trade you can accept, so, you go ahead and capture the bishop, putting the white king in check, white might feel clever. Thinking they can take your knight and gain an extra rook, but then you turn the tables with a checkmate move, queen d3, this outcome is quite common and surprising, this tricky opening can really confuse your opponent, making it hard for them to find the best moves, even a small mistake by them can lead to a loss, just like this, so if you enjoyed my content and learned something new then hit the like and subscribe button for more episodes, wish you all the best bye bye, see ya.